During the gold rush of the late 1800s, ambitious miners and merchants were heading north in the pursuit of gold. To facilitate the droves of people pouring into the provinces, a real network was established by the White Pass and Yukon Route Corporation. This real network became an integral feature connecting the operational network between the Alaskan province of Skagway and the Yukon District in Canada. By the mid-1900s, the initial excitement of the gold rush had long since concluded, but the rail network previously established was still heavily in use. In a bid to ease cargo transportation operations, the company commissioned the construction of a purpose-built container cargo ship. In 1955, the vessel Clifford J. Rogers was first put into operation, ferrying up to 600 shipping containers between British Columbia, Canada and Skagway, Alaska. What made the ship's inaugural journey a defining moment was that it became the world's first purposely built container ship in maritime history. It was also the first ship to employ the intermodal methodology of transiting cargo. The paradigm of the intermodal method utilizes various modes of transportation to successfully ship cargo from multiple locations without handling the freight itself when changing modes. The White Pass and Yukon Route Company is credited with initiating the first usage of the intermodal transportation method to successfully ferry cargo to wherever required. The Clifford J. Rogers measured slightly over 102 meters lengthwise, about 14 meters in width, and over 7 meters in height. It also had a gross register tonnage of about 4,000 tons. Propelling the then massive vessel were two British Murley's four-cycle diesel engines driving a single screw propeller through reduction gearing and reaching service speeds of up to 14 knots. The success and efficiency of the Clifford J. Rogers would not be possible without these dual diesel engines. In the late 19th century, up until the turn of the 20th century, burning coal to power reciprocating steam engines was widely used to run the ships that drove the industrial era. At its peak, a wide variety of reciprocating marine steam engines were developed, but the triple expansion engine was the most common type. The triple expansion engine has three progressively larger diameter chambers, a high pressure chamber, intermediate pressure chamber, and a low pressure chamber that exhausts to the condenser recirculating the steam. The engine first burns coal to create heat, and in turn, the heat is used to form high pressure steam, which then cycles through each cylinder, driving a common crankshaft, and converting the expansive potential of the steam into a motive force. The movement of steam between chambers is regulated by a valve train clocked to the piston's movement. Typically, a sliding piston valve is used. It should be noted that most of the work is accomplished by the high-pressure chamber, with each successive chamber scavenging the residual energy from the previous chamber, still held within the steam. Though this variant of the steam engine was powerful for its time and was even made famous for its use on the Titanic, its largest drawback was its bulk, labor-intensive operation, and inefficiency. The next advancement of the steam engine for marine use would come in the form of steam turbines. Steam turbines offered higher power densities and were more efficient due to their multi-stage approach of directly converting the expansion of steam into rotational motion. Steam turbines facilitated a generation of high-speed liners in the first half of the 20th century and rendered the reciprocating steam engine obsolete, first in warships and then later in merchant vessels. With the advent of steam turbine engines came the transition to heavy fuel oils as a replacement for coal as the fuel of choice in steamships. Fuel oil was more convenient to use and it reduced the manpower needed to process coal as well as reduce space needed for fuel storage. By the 1960s, rising fuel costs almost led to the demise of the steam turbine. The transition to the diesel engine as the primary means of marine propulsion had begun. Many existing steamships were even re-engined to improve fuel efficiency. One high-profile example was the Queen Elizabeth II, which was built in 1968. It had her steam turbines replaced with a diesel electric propulsion plant in 1986. Unlike reciprocating steam engines, diesel engines have far greater thermal efficiency. They were also more fuel efficient at lower operating speeds when compared to steam turbines. In general, they also require far less supervision and maintenance. Most importantly, diesel engines don't rely on external combustion, eliminating the need for a boiler and supporting equipment, making them more space efficient. 
The story of the diesel engine started on February 28, 1892, when Rudolf Diesel patented his new engine design. The following year, he explained the principles of his revolutionary engine in a then-controversial paper called Theory and Construction of a Rational Heat Engine to Replace the Steam Engine and Contemporary Combustion Engine. Since steam power was commonplace at the time, the diesel engine was not well received. Despite the opposition, Diesel knew that as much as 90% of the energy available in fuel is wasted in a reciprocating steam engine, which is why most of his work was driven by a goal of achieving much higher efficiency ratios. Diesel's deep understanding of thermodynamic principles and constraints on fuel efficiency led to a key innovation of his design. Fuel is injected just before the end of the compression cycle and ignited by the high temperature resulting from this compression. This is known as self-ignition, and it's the lowest temperature at which the air-fuel mixture will spontaneously ignite without a source of ignition and entirely by compression. Modern marine diesel engines are broadly classified according to their operating cycle, construction, and speed. The operating cycle consists of either a two-stroke or four-stroke design. Though four-stroke engines are used on smaller marine vessels, the largest, most powerful engines in the world use two-stroke engines because of its ability to burn low-grade fuel reducing the running cost of a ship. Also, there are fewer maintenance requirements and greater reliability over four-stroke engines. Another key benefit is that since two strokes are low-speed engines, there is no requirement for reduction gear or speed reduction arrangement as in the case of most four-stroke engines. Two-stroke diesel engines start their cycle when air is introduced into the cylinder through ports located in the cylinder wall. The admitted air is supplied pressurized by a mechanical blower or a turbocharger. All two-stroke diesel engines require artificial aspiration to operate. As the piston is brought upward, the cylinder becomes charged with highly compressed air. Near top dead center, diesel fuel is then sprayed by the fuel injector and immediately ignites because of the heat and pressure created by the compression. Self-ignition occurs and combustion then takes place, driving the piston downward. The exhaust port opens and high-pressure combustion gases are expelled. Continued downward movement of the piston exposes the intake port in the cylinder wall and the cycle starts again. Large vessel diesel engine construction generally falls under a crosshead, trunk, or an opposed piston engine design. The size and speed of the vessel is usually the primary determinant of which engine design would be used. In a crosshead engine, the notable characteristic is that the main piston has a large piston rod extending downwards from it, to what is effectively a second smaller diameter piston known as a crosshead. The main piston is responsible for gas sealing and carries the piston rings. The smaller piston is purely a mechanical guide that travels along a crosshead cylinder, the purpose of which is to provide additional support to reduce the side forces on the piston that slow-speed diesel engines suffer from. This design is often found in large two-stroke engines used on massive ships that run at a considerably slow engine speed. The main characteristic of a trunk engine is that its pistons are long relative to their diameter. Since the connecting rod is angled for much of its rotation, a side thrust is generated which reacts along the side of the piston and the cylinder walls as it moves. The long piston design acts as a crosshead that absorbs this side thrust. The piston is connected to the connecting rod by a wrist pin. This design is commonly used on ships that require medium engine speeds. An opposed piston design is an engine in which each cylinder has a piston at opposite ends, which in turn drive two crankshafts. Interestingly, this design does not incorporate a cylinder head, eliminating the need for a valve train. Despite this advantage, these engines are not as common because of the added weight and complexity when compared to conventional piston engines which use a single crankshaft for power output. Marine diesel engine's speed is generally broken down into three categories. Slow speed engines operate with a maximum output speed of up to 300 RPM, though most large two-stroke slow speed diesel engine variants operate well below 120 RPM. Astonishingly, some long stroke engines have a maximum rotational speed of just only around 80 RPM. The largest, most powerful engines in the world are slow speed two-stroke crosshead diesel variants. Medium speed engines operate within the range of 300 to 1000 RPM. These are often found on medium sized vessels, sometimes in four stroke configuration. Many typically have a maximum operating speed of approximately 500 RPM. 
high-speed engines have a maximum operating speed above 1,000 RPM. These are common on smaller vessels. The propeller of modern large vessels are at their most efficient at the operating speed of most slow-speed diesel engines. Therefore, ships with these engines do not generally need gearboxes. Usually, these slow-speed propulsion systems consist of either one or two propeller shafts, each with its own direct drive engine. Ships propelled by medium or high-speed diesel engines, on the other hand, may have one or multiple propellers with one or more engines driving each propeller shaft through a gearbox. In configurations where multiple engines drive a single propeller shaft, a clutch mechanism is used, allowing an engine to be disconnected from the gearbox while others keep running. This arrangement allows maintenance to be carried out without disrupting the ship's propulsion. In 2008, the International Maritime Organization, or IMO, announced a timeline to reduce the maximum sulfur content in vessel fuels to 0.5% by January 1, 2020. As part of the policy, a requirement was drafted for vessels to either use fuels containing less than half a percent sulfur or install exhaust cleaning systems to limit a vessel's airborne emissions of sulfur oxides to an equivalent level. An option for vessel operators to meet the IMO 2020 standards is to install liquid natural gas or LNG fuel engines which emit only trace amounts of sulfur. Though this policy shift is incentivized by the effectiveness and better long-term operating costs of LNG fueled engines, Limited access to LNG fueling stations have hindered the production of pure LNG engines. The solution to this has resulted in the next evolution of large vessel diesel engines in the form of dual fuel engines that are capable of running on marine grade diesel, heavy fuel oil, or LNG. This intermittent solution has offered operational flexibility, high efficiency, low emissions, and operational cost advantages to merchant vessel operators. In order to maintain a competitive foothold in modern global economics and trade, manufacturers are keen to explore advancements in marine propulsion technology. One such stride is electric propulsion, in which an electric drive motor is fitted in a submerged pod outside of a ship's hull. Apart from the increased operating efficiency this offers, this design also increases maneuverability since the pod can be rotated 360 degrees. Since the electricity for the electric motors are generated by fuel, they are considered hybrid ships despite the electric drive. This new system can potentially save up to 20% more fuel compared to conventional shaft drives. It's projected that the large ships of the future will use this technology. Marine diesel engines have transformed the way modern cargo shipping is carried out. These engines can propel massive container ships at a staggering 24 knots while maintaining the greatest fuel efficiency of any engine in the world. Since the Clifford J. Rogers, modern cargo ships have seen an incredible increase in their size. As these floating behemoths become larger and the demand of global trade continue to grow, the push to further increase efficiency and reduce shipping costs will always be on the horizon.